More than 50 years ago, the Avro Arrow was developed as a cutting-edge, all-weather military jet. It's now a legend. Well, guess what? Now a Canadian company argues it's still more suitable as an alternative for our aging F-18s than the F-35 would be. Today, Bordeaux Industries has sent a proposal, not today, they sent about a year ago, to the government to update the Arrow in Canada instead of buying into the international deal on the F-35. Let me take a look at some of the details of this pitch. The company says, quote, it can fly faster, more than 3,800 kilometers an hour, compared to the F-35's capability of 1,800 kilometers an hour. It claims that the newly developed Arrow can fly longer, 3,000 kilometers before refueling, compared to the F-35's 2,200 kilo- kilometers. It says it's cheaper, about $12 billion, compared to the F-35's estimated cost between 16 and $25 billion, and that's just over a 20-year life cycle. Don't get me started on the debate about how you should calculate lifestyle costs, life cycle costs. We've done that a lot on the program. So the question, could the Avro Aero really be more economical, a more suitable alternative than the F-35? Joining me now, retired Major General Lewis McKenzie. Good to see you. Likewise. We've been debating the F-35 for over a year. It's been a controversial pro- project. No one's talked about the Aero. Tell me about the, the, why the Avro Aero, 53 years later, is actually being discussed right now. Well, actually, when Marc Bordeaux came to see me a year ago, Bordeaux Industries, that's proposing this, uh, this option, uh, and briefed me on it in my living room, I, I looked around for a candid camera. Uh, I thought I was being set up for a joke. Uh, but then I read the feasibility study. I had no idea that even in 1958-59 that the basic concept itself that was tested, the Mark I, exceeded the speed and the altitude and the turnability of the F-35, for example. So it got my interest. And as I got deeper into it, I realized that we're not talking about recreating the arrow. It's something that would look very much like the arrow, but all the materials and all the internals would produce an aircraft that's two and a half to three times as fast as the F-35, has fantastic range, can actually go to the north and loiter for a while before it comes back. It carries its weapons internally. It, uh, it has super cruise, which means supersonic speed without afterburner on with a full weapons load. And we're buying an aircraft that, as one Australian senator said, should be an A-35, attack 35, not F, fighter 35, because its primary and best role is attacking ground targets. First strike. But first strike, as we did in Libya and Kosovo and elsewhere, is done by cruise missiles. So we're buying an aircraft that is not designed for intercept. A lot of people, let's talk about the air. A lot of people may, I mean, obviously it's a legendary aircraft now. Yeah, and the myth, myth grows. <laughs> let, let's talk about yeah. the, the myth because some will say, Lou McKenzie, this is 1950s technology. Yep. I'm sure it was great, yep, but absolutely. a lot of things have happened since the yep. 50s here. Yep. Uh, tell us why the, just a bit, remind us, why the era was so advanced and why you think its fundamental design remains relevant. Yeah, it was Delta Wing. When you, hang an, when you hang a body under a delta wing, it makes it l- much less expensive. Uh, it pre- creates really long landing gear, so it looks like a praying mantis, so it looks big, but it's not that big. It has, internal del- it has an internal bomb bay, if you want to call it, to carry the weapon systems. Unlike the F-35, if you want to upload it, you hang things from the wings, which make it very identifiable, even if you spend a lot of money incorporating stealth capability which is only super effective as it's attacking a ground target, not against other aircraft. So the basic, think of it as a chassis. The basic chassis was way ahead of its time. There's a lot of speculation that it was chopped up because uh, we were going to defend North America by Bomark missiles. In actual fact, it had the altitude back then to get up there where the U-2 was, and the Americans didn't want some armed aircraft playing around with the U-2. Uh, ostensibly, the plans were lost. The, the, yeah, there, right. there is a, there's a fascinating story here. The guys that showed you the plans, what happened? How did they get the plans to the sort of legendary era? Yeah, they took them home. They took, there wasn't great security, I guess, so they tell me. It was a fairly straightforward, and not, o- not only the plans, but the test data, which is very important. Uh, the other element here, if it's such a great design, why have no other plane to been designed of the Delta Wing? It's not a unique design. Mm-hmm. You know about the design. Yeah. We've had, you know, I could list 20 different fighter aircraft that have been used all around the world, none of which have that mm-hmm. design. If it's so great, why didn't they Compromise, else compromise, it? compromise. And that's what we have here. We have with the F-35 three variants. Okay, you got a variant that's going to land on carriers. You got another variant that's going to short take off vertical uh, landing, and then you have the variant we're buying. 
unfortunately for us, the engine for the variant that needs extra power to land vertically, uh, we have to use, which has about 2,000 pounds of extra weight that isn't required. So we are buying a compromise. It, well, all the nations are buying a compromise. Yeah. And we're famous and sometimes successful in buying one, one system that satisfies a whole bunch of requirements. The F-35 does not satisfy the NORAD requirement for looking after your own airspace. The government has heard about this. Now, now just so our audience knows, this has been in the back rooms. You've been pitching it to government quietly mm -hmm. for a long time. Now you've decided to become public. Why? Because the government's basically rejected it. Now, right. we called the DND, yeah. and here's what they said to us. The Associate Minister for National Defense, Bernard Valcourt, sent us this note, quote, well, we appreciate the sentimental value of the Avro Aero, which was canceled 53 years ago. Analysts looked at the proposal and determined it's not a realistic option. The proposal to develop, test, and manufacture what effectively would be a brand new aircraft is risky, would take too long, and cost too much to meet Canada's needs. So let me just go over that and get your reaction. Mm -hmm. It's sentimental and unrealistic. No, well, it's certainly sentimental, but it's declared unrealistic from, if I can use the term, inside the Ottawa Beltway. You know, there's a requirement for somebody that's impartial, and I mean truly impartial, not the, uh, not the secretary, the procurement secretary that's been, uh, been established, uh, chaired by Public Works, Deputy Minister, uh, Deputy Minister level from DND. We're talking about people that have an inherent, what seems to be, fix-in for the F-35 and are not prepared to consider other alternatives. Let's face it, if they were to consider this alternative, the 105, they would have to open the door to other people to compete too. I understand that. But the fact is that, uh, that the way that the responses have come back, it seems that all the decisions have been made inside the government. Well, now, what, when they say analysts looked at this proposal and determined it's mm -hmm. not realistic, I mean, you're part of this group, you know these people, uh, what analysts looked at the proposal? Having the faintest idea. They didn't share that with me. They just came back with that comment. What I would like to see is, what was it, four days ago, the government announced that KPMG would audit, yeah. audit the F-35 and look at other possibilities. Now, there's an organization, KPMG, that could look outside the Ottawa city limits and bring in aerospace experts, business experts, and, uh, and manufacturing experts if they were to say, this is ridiculous, doesn't have a chance of a snowball in hell to come to fruition, then I, for one, would have to accept that. Did the did DND get the Bordeaux feasibility study? Your group, they did a, they did a feasibility study. They costed it out, 20 yeah. to 30 year projections. They said it would demonstrate it would be $9 billion. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Has DND looked at the feasibility study? Absolutely. I delivered the feasibility study personally to a ministerial level, including the, uh, the PMO office. Uh, they had it for a year. Uh, the minister sent a copy to, congratulations, General Lawson, the current CDS, when he was the deputy commander of NORAD. That's about six or seven months ago. So they've had it. They've had it for a year, yeah. So, so uh, that's interesting. So Lawson, who's now the chief of the defense staff, has seen this proposal. Absolutely. And he's an Air Force guy, just so everyone knows. That's why he's yeah, probably yeah, absolutely. Side. And, and his comments were just thank you? I don't know what his comments were because he didn't send an answer, but Associate, uh, Minister, Associate Minister Fantino, a good friend, was kind enough to send me an answer. I just kept getting phone calls, go talk to somebody else or talk to this guy which I did, which we did, because i I gotta, I got to emphasize I'm not part of the group. I am giving it some profile for a few days until I wean myself off. But how do you get answers out of this? You say Fantino because you know him, you have a yeah. relationship. He gave you an answer on it or what? He wrote me a letter in, in June and gave me an answer. Saying? Yeah. Saying more or less what you just quoted, that they did not feel it could be achieved uh, in Canada, which was a little embarrassing in the time uh, required. So what's the next step here? I, I mean, frankly, a lot of people will say, you know, it does seem it's a little late to the party here. They've been mm -hmm. talking about procurement for to replace the F-18, CF-18s for a long time. Yeah. Uh, you knew that there'd been a long-term, some commitment towards the F-35 mm -hmm. process. Mm -hmm. Lots of debate about whether they've had a formal open competition, a statement of requirements. We all know the controversies around that. But why did this take so long to get into the pipeline? Well, it was only brought to me a year ago, and quite frankly, considering how long it's taken for the F-35 to get to its current position where it's receiving very uh, genuine and accurate criticism for some of its shortcomings, then obviously a year ago plus uh, Bordeaux decided that it was time to look at this option. 
uh, next steps now? The government's basically said, thank you, no thanks. What do you do now? Well, I can only assume, based on publications so far, or at least comments so far, that the public, the majority of the public that have responded, seem to be behind investigating the concept to see if it's practical. And with KPMG now auditing, I think that would be the next step. It, but I, do I expect that to happen? No. We're you dealing... want an independent audit because you think a made in Canada solution Absolutely. for a fighter plane is the answer. Twenty to twenty five thousand full time jobs, ninety five percent of all the money between nine and thirty million billion, take your pick, depending on how people look at the numbers, spent here in Canada. I mean that's pretty compelling you stuff. Have to, but high <laughs> risk because you just there's you know, Canada would be going it alone. We have sent our CF eighteens to three wars. Gulf War One, Kosovo Serbia and Libya and the paint hasn't been scratched on one of them. I mean we are talking about a relatively uh, safe environment where an operational uh, lack of capability for a couple of years and that's what this would be until 2020, 2021 is not necessarily a serious undertaking if you continue to attack countries with third world air defense. Retired Major General Lewis McKenzie, I'll tell you, talking about the F-35 and the Arrow is not a conversation a lot of people expected to have. It's back on the table again. Thanks for the introduction to the topic. Thanks. Cheers, Evan.